In this tutorial, we'll explore head and tail recursion. Some important facts to know. Head recursion is when a recursive call happens at the beginning of the method before other processing. Tail recursion is when a recursive call happens at the end of the method after other processing. There are other circumstances where other processing may happen both before and after a recursive call. Our code samples are written in Java, but these concepts can be applied to other programming languages like JavaScript, Python, or C++. Let's start with head recursion. In this snippet, we have a method called mystery that takes an int input and prints the numbers from zero to the input value in ascending order. Notice that the recursive call happens at the beginning of the method before other processing. Now let's write a main method and see what happens when we call mystery with the argument three. A call stack is a LIFO structure, which stands for last in, first out. Pay attention to how new stack frames are pushed onto the top of the stack. The newer frames at the top will be the first to be popped off the stack. We start with a call to the main method and push a frame onto the stack. When main calls mystery three, another frame is pushed onto the stack with X set to three. We check if X is greater than zero, three is greater than zero, so we make another call to the method. X minus one is two, so we call mystery two and push it onto the stack. The system out print line at the end of the method won't be processed until we work our way back down the stack. In this frame, X is two. We check, is X greater than zero? It is, so we call mystery X minus one and push mystery one onto the stack. In this frame, X is one. We check, is X greater than zero? It is, so we call mystery X minus one and push mystery zero onto the stack. In this frame, X is zero. We check, is X greater than zero? It isn't, so we don't make a recursive call. We continue on to the next line and print zero to the console. Now that we've finished this method, we pop this frame off the top of the stack. We continue down to the next frame and complete the unprocessed portion. Here, X is one, so we'll output one. Then we'll pop this frame off the stack. In the next frame, X is two, so we output two and pop it off the top of the stack. We go to the next frame where X is three, output three, then pop it off the stack. The call to main completes and its frame is popped off the stack. Now let's look at our second code example, which demonstrates tail recursion. This almost identical method, also called mystery, takes an int input and prints the numbers from the input value down to zero in descending order using tail recursion. In this case, the recursive call happens at the end of the method after other processing. We start with a call to the main method and push a frame onto the stack. When main calls mystery three, Another frame is pushed onto the stack with X set to three. We print X and output three to the console. We check, is X greater than three? It is, so we make another call to mystery X minus one. We call mystery two and another frame is pushed onto the stack with X set to two. We print out the X value, which outputs two to the console. We check, is X greater than zero? It is, so we make another call to mystery X minus one. We call mystery one and another frame is pushed onto the stack with X set to one. We print out the X value, which outputs one to the console. We check is X greater than zero? It is, so we make another call to mystery X minus one. We call mystery zero and another frame is pushed onto the stack with X set to zero. We print out the X value, which outputs zero to the console. We check is X greater than zero? It is not, so we don't make the recursive call and finish up this run of the method. We pop the frame off the top of the stack. Next, we finish up mystery one and pop the frame off the stack. We finish up mystery two and pop the frame off the stack. We finish up mystery three and pop the frame off the stack. The call to main completes and its frame is popped off the stack. You can see the ordering of the outputs is opposite to our head recursion example. Let's take a look at the full Java code for both the head recursion and tail recursion mystery methods side by side. As you can see, the primary difference between the two methods is the placement of the recursive call. In head recursion, the call occurs before the other processing, while in tail recursion, the call occurs after the other processing. Now let's examine a third code example, which demonstrates a method that combines both head and tail recursion techniques to showcase their effects within a single code snippet. In this mystery method, we'll first increment the input value by one and print it. Second, we make the recursive call, Finally, we decrement the input value by one and print it again. This allows us to see the effects of both head and tail recursion in a single code snippet. 
For practice, try it on your own. I'll leave the solution in the video description. Try implementing these concepts in your own code and see how they can help you solve complex problems more efficiently. If you have any questions or want to share your experience with recursion, feel free to leave a comment below. To keep learning, click on the next video. Otherwise, check out the full playlist. See you soon.